So you agree that there are uh, events, I wouldn't exactly call them mutations, although you could call them that, that can double individual genes, whole chromosomes, or all the chromosomes. Correct. Okay. So that would allow for more space for changes to occur within that particular organism's genome. No. If humans already have 3 billion genes, doubling it to 6 billion doesn't help the problem. You still got, you already got 3 billion to work with. You're, you're, just, you're, just, you're trying to hide it in, in a, uh, the fog of, well, if there was more, then it could happen. No, there's already plenty and it doesn't happen. Let me ask you a question real quick, Jared. If you have 3 billion base pairs and you want to double any one of those, or if you want to double any one of the chromosomes, now you have more material is what you're saying, right? Yep. More material to work with. They have more paper to write on, more stuff to change. That's right. What type of selective pressures do these have? Are they currently expressed? Put the pressure on uh, the doubling? Well, first of all, for natural selection to work, something has to either be detrimental or beneficial, correct? I mean, well, it's not going to keep it unless it's beneficial or it's neutral, right? Yeah. So if these things aren't being expressed, you're saying they can mutate and change in the background when they're not being used, and whenever something good happens, then those can come forward and be used, right? Uh, yeah, basically. So if they're not being used, then how does natural selection know to keep the changes and to continue to progress with beneficial changes? Why would it get rid of them? Huh? Why would it get rid of them? Well, my point is it's not going to do hardly anything if they're not being expressed in any way. Oh, no, it's going to, it's going to have a negative impact because now the body has to expend energy to build that. Well, barely, I mean. Well, anything. I mean, let's look at that. That's what evolution process is. I mean, it's, it's dragging around extra weight, eating up extra energy, and it's doing yeah, nothing. Like, Hovind, you have like two tablespoons of DNA in your body. Come on. Right. That's nothing. I mean, I'm a 200-pound guy. Two tablespoons of DNA doesn't mean anything. Well, let's take a, let's take a paramecium. They don't weigh 200 pounds. Yeah, but they also don't have to worry about weight very much because they're suspended in fluid. Okay. But it is they're taking extra energy to make this, which means they have to eat more, have to find this, uh, they have to supply more to their body. Slightly. I mean, you're talking about, about differences that are so small that I don't think that's ever going to really matter that much. I'm just pointing out this is something else for them to build and carry around. Yeah, and if, they, if there's no need for it. I, I've seen examples of paramecia where there, you have two species that are very, very similar, and, the, and one of them has many multiple times more DNA in its nucleus than the other one does. So it's obviously, I mean, nature is, is agreeing with me. It does not matter that much. Nature is agreeing you know, with it, you. It, it's not going to cause one organism to die out if, if, it, if it increases the junk or the, or the, the space in its genome. Well, if all other things were exactly equal and there's some yeah, kind of pressure... Yeah. Yes, but they never are. Okay, but we, we got a thousand paramecium living in the same little drop of water, mm -hmm. and one of them is having to expend more energy to build this junk DNA that it doesn't need yet, but someday it might need it. That one's at a disadvantage to the other 999. Maybe, but to, but to such a little, to a, such a small extent that it's never going to matter, or maybe not never, but it doesn't matter. We, we observe that it does not matter. Well, the small events Unless don't matter. Now, think about it. If small events don't matter, you can't have evolution because you rely on billions of small events. You rely on these events to improve it. Why don't you, you go to Harvard? These events? Huh? You go to Harvard. What happens quickly yeah. at Harvard? Yeah. But if these if these small events can just can can improve it, why can't these small events also destroy it? They they can. But what I'm saying is like that is such a small thing, such a small thing that maybe if it eventually will die out because of that, or or maybe the others will will win over it, but we don't know how much time that would take. Well, Jared, you're a mathematician, right? I mean, yeah. you look at the, the ratio of beneficial uh, and neutral mutations to detrimental ones that are also, you know, often life-destroying. It's like 10,000 to 1. I mean... I, I don't know what the ratio is. I, I will be interested in learning that. Oh, well, yeah, but, you know, for yourself, look into the ratio. And you're a math this is right up your alley. You're a mathematician. Just check it out and try to figure out that... And I, I'm honestly saying that, from my knowledge, I believe it's about 10,000 to 1. So, and I encourage you to check that out, and correct me if I'm wrong. But just check that out and see that if that is, you know, it's, just see if that's sufficient mathematically to give us all the diversity we have today. You know, yeah, just make that, you know, side project for yourself. This, this, this already wants up on my list. 
uh, that I want to study, actually. So I, I can't quite comment on that yet. Yeah, I know that. That's just something for you to check out in the future. Well, there's something else you can help me with, Jared. Years, uh, 40 years ago, Disney produced a Donald Duck cartoon called Donald in Math Magic Land. Yeah, I've seen it. I would like to get a copy of that. The one I thought we have one. He goes through the Fibonacci sequence, the uh, golden mean ratio. Yeah, yeah, it's the one where he where has the pentagram on his hand. Right, the pentagram on his hand, correct. Yeah, yeah. I saw that when I was in fifth grade, actually. I, I know. We, I thought we had it in our library, too, but I can't find it. Anyway, I saw it just about maybe Three, four months ago, they were showing how uh, the pool shark guy was uh, just knocking the balls around perfectly on the pool table. I was going to learn it so I could win some money at the pool hall, but I just couldn't get my math down that good. So. you got to be good at geometry. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, probably geometry. Anyway, okay. so let's, let's get back to the thing with the information. So so you admit then that this, this doubling process that leaves behind more room in the genome like that opens up the possibility of more mutations coming in and more possibilities for what the organism can do. I will admit that if you will also admit this may indeed be detrimental because of the extra energy to re to build this extra chromosome. And not only that, I mean, you can see whenever we do, for instance, in Down syndrome, uh, you toss an extra chromosome, I believe 21, in there, and now you've got serious problems. I mean, sure, you have more base pairs now to, you know, for raw material mutations and so forth. Right. And when you double the number of chromosomes in a strawberry with polyploidy, they don't taste as good. They're huge, but they're just like eating cardboard. So it's not always, whenever you want to copy something, that's not always good. It's, it's but yes, okay, Jared, I will agree. Yes, chromosomes can double, and you now have an exact copy of the information. So this is more space for mutations to take place. Right. And so once you have more space and, and the mutations are happening, that's why the, these two things combined increase the complexity. You think so, but that's never been observed. That's where you just well, switch from science to religion. Actually, I think this has been observed. I think, actually, uh, Martin pointed out to you how this has been observed with bacteria. Well, I, have to, I need to point it out to me again because I didn't get it. Uh, well, Jared, aside from, uh, I think we just pretty much exhausted the whole chromosome doubling uh, situation here. Aside from that method, what other ones do you know that would uh, be good here? Aside from I this, don't know that much about this. I'm just asking, does this count? But uh, yeah, is that well? That's the the most prominent argument that evolutionists have. But do you know of any others like that? Or is that no, basically? No, I'm not a geneticist. I'm just no, I know that. Well, I don't. You don't have to be a geneticist. I'm not a geneticist either. I'm just saying this is probably the most argued uh, thing right here is polyploidy or you know doubling chromosomes and so forth like that. If that was really the way that things happen then looking back, shouldn't we be able to build a little tree, a branch in here, to, let's see, you know, to see how these creatures evolved and came in line to look at where the chromosome numbers are increasing and so forth? Oh, no, there's, there's so many possible paths to lead to the genomes of, of living species. That's what I'm asking you. What are some of the other ones? Some of the what? Well, you just said that uh, one of the major ways that evolution can take place is by doubling the chromosome numbers, which gives you more raw information. You know, you've got yeah. 3 billion base pairs a way, yeah. That's a, well, what are some other ones? Uh, doubling uh, sections of the chromosome, like doubling genes or doubling two of genes. Which is kind of the same thing, just on a smaller scale. Exactly, yeah, it's the same idea. So it's, yeah. That's all you need, though. I think I, I think that would be sufficient, because if you've got uh, the space increasing and you've got mutations changing the information in the, in the new space, those two things together increase complexity. Okay, would, would you agree that most mutations are harmful or fatal? But well, we've got a break here. Stay with, stay with us if you'd like after the break. Well, I want to hear the answer to that. Are they harmful or fatal? And where's the good one? We'll be back, folks, in about one minute.